Hello, everybody, and welcome to North American Elite Wrestling Cajun. This is your host, Danny Jackpot, alongside with the former All-American champion. You know, Danny, let's be honest here. I mean, I, I, I mean, the fact of the matter is that that title should still be around my waist. I should be in action here tonight rather than sit here at the commentary table. You could blame another of our fellow commentator partners, Connor James, for getting pinned in that match. He's the reason why you're the champion right now, I believe. Oh, well, I can't wait to get my hands around this, Nick. And speaking of, here comes one, one the first matchup of the evening. Nick Gemini teaming up with Sean Dynasty, the Comic Con, the winners of the Twitter poll, voted by you, the fans. You mean, Tammy, Sean Dynasty is still in this company? Sean Dynasty, along with Nick Gemini and Evan O'Shea, the Comic Con, he he might not be around very often, but he's a fan favorite, winning 50% of the votes here tonight. You know, I'm gonna stay away from the uh, whenever they do like one of these, you know, Cosmo plays. I'm gonna try to stay away from it because you never know what Sam said it gonna look like. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Nick Gemini, do you know much about Nick? Well, I think that he's a very good superstar. I mean, I've seen him in action for a couple of times. I mean, you know... He's been he, around for a long time now. That's so true. But, you know, I, maybe just maybe tonight would be their night. Maybe tonight would be his night. That would be his first championship win in North American Elite Wrestling. He is a former NCWL Tag Team Champion, I know. Here we go. As his partner, Sean Dynasty, making his way down to the ring. Uh, now, this this man, I've known this man for a long time, Danny. Um, you defeated him for the Central Zone Championship in New NAW, let's not forget. That's true, but he also stole my girlfriend. Did he? It's a long story, Danny. It's a very long story. That's why you had to steal that central zone title. You steamrolled through him in that match. I, I, I can see why now. Sean Dynasty getting himself ready for this matchup. Now, interesting in this match, Sean Dynasty is going to be in the ring with a man he's been a former tag team champion with, and that is Biff Andreas. I'll tell you what, Biff Andreas. I really, really like Biff Andreas. I'll be honest with you, Danny. I mean, Biff Andreas is like a legend here in Carl. But what's there not the to like? I agree, a legend in the making, a, le a legend in call already, and a legend in the making. His his story is not written yet, not finished yet. Mm -mm. Now, I think you might know this man very well. You might not recognize him. This is Calberg, Colex, Alex Snow. Mm. I think that um, definitely... He wants to prove that he deserves to be champion here tonight. Some would say it's a fluke, and some would say that it's Biff Andres is the reason why he holds that United States Tag Team title. So basically, what most people are saying is that Biff Andres is carrying this team. Yes, you, you. I, I didn't want to just put it like that, but Lamarcus Carter nailed it right on the head. Of course, I mean I've always nailed things on the head, Danny. I mean it's almost like it's like as if I'm the smartest guy here at the table. I, there's no denying that. I'm sitting here smoking a bowl, <laughs> getting ready for this United States Tag Team title action. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, the one thing I've noticed about this tag team match, not one of these tag teams came out together. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. I think that, that just, there's no team unity or nothing. They just get this says way for a fight. Well, I know the Comic-Con used to come out together, but Nick Gemini was getting a little bit jealous over Incognito and his girlfriend, Denise Parkinson, and he's been having a little bit of like a change of heart lately. Oh, boy. See, this is what happens when, when you have your girlfriend be involved in tag team wrestling with you, because in the long run, you lose your girlfriend. <laughs> She's too busy looking at other guys that are all muscled and oily. Not to mention the fact that they probably might have a longer stick. <laughs> <laughs> that selfie stick probably longer by a few inches at least. Biff and Jerry has a question for you though. Got Biff? Um, no. <laughs> you don't got enough Biff. The <laughs> only man. man in North American League Wrestling to hold both sets of tag team championships. Biff and Jerry. 
As they give it to the door of the cage here. And referee the Todd is going to be the referee of this matchup, I believe. Well, I do not envy this man because he has to make sure this matchup goes well, which is easier said than done. And Nick Gemini goes flying in the steel cage. That's the size advantage that Alex Snow has. Absolutely. Well, anyone else like has on Nick Gemini. Dynasty is trying to get the one up out of there. And I, I was wondering, tag team matches, why do you try to leave the cage so quickly? Do you want to leave your man behind? Or do you have enough faith in your man to get, to get out of there? You know what? That's a very, very good thing to ponder on, Danny. Because, see, if, if I was involved in a cage match, I would try to make sure that my tag team partner and I, we work hard. And, you know, one of us, if one of us managed to escape the cage, then the other person should have enough faith in their tag team partner to uh, get the job done. That's very true, but you never know the skills of the other opponent. The last time I seen you in a cage, though, Carter, it was one-on-one, -on -one, Connor James versus Aussie Andy. And you get in the steel cage, and you used to keep attacking Andy to let Connor James walk out with very little effort. Well, let me tell you something. I carry Connor James. Uh, the only thing Connor, Connor James carry is my bag to, uh, to the hotel room. I've noticed that. And then Connor James was the Maple Leaf Championship and ditches you out in the tag team that you guys were in. What was up with that? Well, listen, I'm, I'm, yes, be glad he almost the used you for to win the Maple Leaf Championship, in my opinion. Well, I think that I think personally, Connor James doesn't know much about this business whatsoever. None. I completely agree. <laughs> I'm not even gonna deny right there. I completely agree. That's right now. <laughs> you know, but we're, we're talking so much about Conda James, we're not even paying attention to what's going on in the ring. Yeah, we got 10 years, over two decades of action of Biff and Dre's and Sean Dynasty, as it is the summer of 2020, and they are once again locking up inside a steel cage. Yes, yes, we saw you guys, we didn't have to talk about the first uh, the smoke so much fire, it makes me kind of wonder whether or not he should be on the state flag of Washington. But if we didn't commentate, then who else would commentate this show? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's very true. Right now, if Andreas, I'm if Andreas, I better continue on this punishment instead of waiting for your opponent to get back up. And Biff's trying something here, but Nick Jerry and I able to reverse whatever Alex Snow had as Biff is bringing Sean Dynasty somewhere. Yeah, stay on your man. See, this is what happens when you light up. You yep, light now up, Biff's on his back. Take can take an inch and turn it to a yard. Especially Sean Dynasty, a man who's a former ACWL World Heavyweight Champion. Absolutely. And now Alex Snow seems to be climbing the four side to steal. Let's see if he can get to the top. And <laughs> we're still waiting to see if he gets to the top rope. On the top of the cage. <laughs> well, anyways, the Gemini was oh, able to stop ooh. Alex Snow right ooh. there. Well, that's going to leave a mark. As Alex Snow tried to climb that steel cage, was stopped by Nick Gemini. Oh, hey. And Biff Andreas goes flying down thanks to Sean Dynasty. Yeah, but I tell you what, you know, this thing just continues to go back and forth here. And Sean Dynasty now trying to make an attempt to leave the cage, but... Alex Snow is right there along with Biff Andreas. Both men not letting him get out. That's right. You know, I bet you one of them say, hey, where you going? We just want the party just begun. And all four men still locked up in the steel cage, and this party has definitely begun. St uh -oh. Spinning toe hold, shades of Terry Funk by Sean Dynasty. Well, uh, Sean Dynasty has gone to school. Yeah, that's spinning toe hold. That's classic right there. Yep, that's true. And right now, Sean Dines continues his assault. Alex and Snow is continuing his assault. I gotta say, how smart is the Sean Dynasty? He's attacking the legs of Biff Andreas. Uh oh. Ooh. Alex Snow just whipped down to the mat right there. Oh, wait a minute. I can stop. I try to get out of here in a hurry. Now, Nick Gemini is quicker than anybody else in this match, I believe. Uh oh. Oh, uh, Biff well, Andreas sends him flying down the mat at least 10 feet in the air. 
Oh boy. Just back and forth this match is going. Alex Snell with a little mini spine buster right there on Sean Dynasty as Nick Gemini has some offense on Biff. But wait a second, Snow's climbing the cage. Uh-oh. Just a decent man. Just ain't gonna let that just, just not gonna let the opponents leave. Uh-oh. This is the opening contest. Both men trying to escape the cage. Uh, Sean Dynasty gonna try to be the first one to get out. Alex Snow and Biff Andreas are not there yet. Is John Dynasty gonna be the first one to get out of this cage? Uh oh, uh oh, uh, uh, this might get real ugly. Sean Dynasty trying to hold on. Oh, this is gonna get ugly. Oh. <laughs> Alex Snow sends him flying. Oh, uh, well, this is going to hurt. And this match right back at square one. All four competitors still in the steel cage looking for a snapmare driver. Uh oh. Black Snow's up to some. Nope, oh, too soon. I think you see Nick Gemini climbing the cage and Alex Snow smartly knowing Gemini's speed. Absolutely. Uh oh. Oh, wait a minute. It's a wait a second. Is this going to be it? Biff and Alex Snow, the tag team of both of them, are climbing the cage. Is this going to be it? They're both on top of the cage. Well, sometimes we both this match is about to come to an end. And I don't think the Comic Con can believe it, and they know that this match is over. Out of nowhere, Biff Andreas and Alex Snow climb the steel cage. Victorious. Absolutely. Ah, you know, the other tag team that's left in that cage, I'm pretty sure they got some success. How come, how come, can you stop them? We couldn't stop them. Everyone and not only fast. that. The, the, the strategy they used, I believe, was better than what Comic-Con came in here with. Comic-Con was friendly trying to get someone out of the cage, where both men climbed the cage together. It seemed like they almost had each other's back the entire time. Yeah, Santez, me for Sean Dynasty and uh, his tag team partners back to the drawing board. As Alex Snow and Biff Andreas pick up a big win for the United States Tag Team Champions, still the champions here tonight. Absolutely. Celebrate tonight, boys, because you're going to have some more competition coming your direction real soon. I believe that their next opponents are going to be facing them in Mexico as we are heading to the Lucha Fiesta in North American Elite Wrestling after this event. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Just stay away from the water. Just stay away from the water. <laughs> And we're going to find out who are the Canadian Tag Team Champions going into that Lucha Fiesta event when the Samurai Dragons, the former Canadian Tag Team Champions, challenge the damage gauge for the Tag Team titles here right now. And LaMarcus Carter, I know you know the damage gauge very well. Now, I, you know, I have a boatload of respect for Matt Icon and uh, Suspect. I mean, they, they work their tails off. You know, they get to the spot where they are, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, they work their tails off. But you know what? This tag team that's making their way down here, the Samurai Dragons, they sure said they want to make sure that they can get the damage gauge to all they can handle. Kai and White, Chi and Black, these two men have also defeated the damage gauge in 2018 for the new NAW Western Tag Team Championship. So these, so these guys have once defeated the damage gauge before. Four tag team question, gold. Danny? Yes. Is there, is there a bat uh, game that's going on in town? <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's just how the Samurai Dragons come to dress to compete every single night. Uh -oh. I thought for a moment that they like as if we got a black Batman and a white Batman. Though I've never seen a Batman dressed in white before. Now wait till you see. I don't think he's on the card tonight, but Black Ant Man, Black Ant Man's just look. It looks just like Batman, honestly. I think. And here we go, folks. Let's be wait. Look at the damage gauge. Matt Icorn, the suspect, the Canadian Tag Team Champions. Let's not forget the suspect is a former North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Champion himself. Absolutely. You know what? You, you got to like the damage case. They're coming down here and they mean business. They look like they want to make a statement against these two men. These two men have been bragging for two years about how they beat the damage gauge for the new AW Western Tag Team titles. Well, I mean, you can do all the talking you want, but actually speaks louder than words. 
and a steel cage with a damage gauge. That's a place where I would not want to be. Thank God I'm their friends. Hmm. As the suspect looks fired up here tonight for this act for this for this action. Absolutely, the cage is coming right back down. Once again, two teams locked up in the steel cage up. Cage and Canadian Tag Team Championship is on the line. <laughs> and here we go. Out to the Samurai Dragons are the quicker of the two teams here. But Matt Icorn and the suspect definitely have the strength and just, just the overall advantage of being the legends they are. Absolutely. I mean, if you have an advantage of your opponent, you got to take every advantage you can get. And you cannot that up on your opponent either. You let up on your opponent, like I said in the earlier matchup. Give him Mitch, and they'll take the full yard. Yeah, I think Biff Andreas and Alex Snow proved that out of nowhere. Both men quickly climbed the cage, able to retain the tag team titles in that matchup. Absolutely. Right now, the damage cage like they're in trouble right now. As the Samurai Dragons, they are a threat. They are former Canadian Tag Team Champions. This would be their second reign if they could somehow defeat the damage gauge. Absolutely. That is, this Ash just continues, just continues to go in their direction. Wait a minute! Like I said, and they would have a base to the top of their own. I think that they maybe just seen what Biff and Alex Snow had done earlier, but the damage gauge stopping them. Yeah. Well, stopping one and now the other, possibly. Ooh. Oh, he is taken down. You see, that's one of the major downsides of being in a cage match. You think you you think you had the upper hand on your opponent, you like halfway up on the cage, and then here comes your opponent coming up behind you, he drags you down. And not only does he drag you down, as you seen the case of Chi right there, he got Chi got slammed down eight, seven feet. Absolutely. Ooh. Oh, suspect eats the steel cage. Thanks to Chi. Yeah. And well, Kai. No suspect got his uh, daily use of iron tonight. <laughs> I like that one. Oh, I hope he's not trying to steal too much right there. Uh -oh. Suspect. What's he got planned here? Wait a second. Uh -oh. One of the samurai dragons trying to make his way out of the steel cage. Ooh, well, that was the best suspect is up at the top. And They're going, to oh, up. diving elbow, not shades of Macho Man, but shades of the Texas Rattlesnake. Ooh, and we got a splash on the other end. And I think the Samurai Dragons, that's kind of them. They used to be these high-flying luchador superstars. They're not like that anymore. I think that plancha kind of shows it. Uh-oh, like one, one, one of them is about to get ready to get up out of here. Suspect. As, as he was so. trying to make his way out, but the suspect stopping him. Yes! Oh my God! Oh man! Uh oh! And Matt Icorn's in a bad way right now as yeah. Kai's planning man, something. Man, man, man. A superplex! A superplex! <laughs> Plex? And I've seen no way! No oh my! Oh my God! Did oh, you man. just see that LaMarcus Carter that he just do a super Falcon arrow? Oh, what a foul. Suspect almost landing on G right there. Uh-oh. Matt hey, Icorn. Uh, Matt, Matt, you, wanna go there? you might want to go there and stop Hill. I think he was knocked silly from that super Falcon arrow. Ooh. Oh, my God. Both men go grind down the mat. Suspect went for that million dollar clothesline misses. Oh boy, like I said, the damage gauge is about to give it to exact some punishment here. Matt Icorn is getting, I think he's getting the hiccup on the back here. And I think he needs to. I don't know how Matt Icorn's standing after that giant move. Uh oh. And Matt Icorn's trying to get out of the cage. Ooh. Oh my god! I say this whoever wins this matchup, they earned it. Definitely, definitely so as the oh my God, suspect! Did you see how his throat got cut up in that rope right there? Yeah, that's gonna yeah, that's gonna hurt. That is going to hurt. Damn it, Top of his head. Also in the cage, one of the samurai dragons trying to get out now. Oh, suspect not letting him leave. And will he get out in time? The suspect also climbing the cage has his hands. Oh my hey. God! Almost, almost landed on that icon right there, I believe. Uh oh. As Chi now trying to make his way out of the ring. 
I think that's Kai, actually. I'm sorry. I, get, I confuse the two of them myself sometimes. And during this yeah. great action, the suspect. Uh-oh. I think, yep. Wait a minute. Suspect's trying to get back here. And Matt Eichhorn has the other Samurai Dragon oh, in his grasp. Oh. oh, wait a second. Eichhorn might have just made a huge mistake. Yeah, he made a huge mistake because the Samurai Dragon's in exactly good. Oh, oh, the Samurai Dragon's now could be on the offense here. Oh. The chase is on. As one of the Samurai Dragons, the White Samurai Dragon, trying to get out of here. Matt Eichhorn onto his legs uh, and feet. Yeah, he was there to stop him. We got one the Samurai Dragon out of the match. Oh, oh, oh going to sleep by the other Samurai Dragon. Well, here we go. This this could be bad for the one Samurai Dragon right now, though. Oh, I think Matt Eichhorn, I think Matt Eichhorn is, is climbing up out of here. Suspect Matt trying to get to the door. I thought he was trying to get to the door. But Matt Eichhorn's getting up out of here. As the suspect is up on his feet, going for the million dollar clothesline. Matt Eichhorn's out of the cage. Suspect got reversed. Oh boy. Maybe he gets down for one on one now. Uh oh. Suspect could be looking for that dark paradox. Oh boy. He's about it's to. Look at... oh, it's looking. Dark my paradox! God, this and Suspect, I think, yeah, he's about to say he's done here. And he is just getting the fans on fire right there. The Suspect now climbing the cage. Oh, boy, how quick. He's not going to be able to chase him, Danny. This matchup is over. I think the Suspect's about to retain as he's climbing down right now. Yes, the Suspect and Matt Icorn still a tag team champions. Man. I tell you what, you got to give Damage Gage credit. We gotta get the Samurai Dragon squared too. They gave the damage gauge everything they could get, they could handle. That was a hell of a tag team matchup. The Samurai Dragons, some said, well, how the damage gauge look and what the damage gauge stock going into this, they had not a chance. Well, the Samurai Dragons were only one man away from winning the tag team titles tonight. Yeah, no kid. And don't forget, it, it, the Samurai Dragons were the first one to get a man over the cage. And but no matter what, the only two men they escaped tonight and still the tag team champions. Matt Icorn, the suspect, the damage gauge. Absolutely. Canadian tag team champion still. They're, they're going to have a giant threat target on their back going into Lucha Fiesta now. Absolutely. They got like a bullseye on their backs. Especially being the legendary tag team as in the... As we have to move on here with Cajun Divas tag team action. Our third tag team match in a row. Who spaced this card? I want to try and find out who made this card. That's what I'm trying to find now. And I got to be loving the action so far. A little backstory to this match. Denise Parkinson, Alexandra Marie, the two ladies coming out right now, got attacked at collision course by the two ladies they're about to face before the match even started. Now, because of Cage Jen, they're all going to get a steal. Cage, the match has to start. And they're all locked in the cage together. Oh, boy. Going to have one hell of a cat fight, I think, coming up here. Yeah. Well, you know, what I have to say, you know, I've seen women in steel cages before, but this one tastes the cake. And the reason I said this one tastes the cake is usually when you see a woman in a steel cage, she'd be dancing. And these ladies aren't dancing in a steel cage. I'll tell you that tonight. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. Mm -mm. <laughs> Denise Parkinson, also Nick Gemini's girlfriend, on a roll here in North America Late Wrestling until that, until that, uh, that backstage, uh, that Assault, I should say, by the, by our opponents tonight. Absolutely. And here comes, well, the and very first ever Baltimore Divas Maryland. champion, Alexandria Maria. Maria. The pop star, Alexandria Maria. I was about to say, she kind of reminds me of that, um, the old 80s cartoon, Jim. Oh, I see that. I, I get like a Miley Cyrus vibe from her when I see her. Mm-hmm. All we know is Alexandria Marie, she ain't looking to make music tonight. The pop star looking to uh, kick some ass tonight. Well, she wants to put that she's the best of both worlds, so let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> I got that reference. <laughs> Alexandria Marie, Denise Parkinson teaming up to take on the Vixville Vengeance, who are about to make their ways down the ring right now. Here we go. This would be the tag team of Lilith and Rachel Cross, Red Hood and Rachel Cross, the Divas Champion. And delicious. 
Did I just hear the ring announcer call one of them delicious? I would say, oh, I mean, look at Red Hood Rachel Cross. She's kind of like a devious delicious bitch. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. One of us looks like Little Red Riding Hood. That's actually the inspiration for her. Oh. Yeah, she calls herself a little naughty Red Riding, red, 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 red riding Hood. So, little Red Riding Hood. What Red Hood, Rachel what Cross. What big fish you have? <laughs> well, you know what her finisher name is? What? The big, the big bad wolf. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Who in the world likes this stuff? <laughs> Unfortunately, us. As the Demon Tag Team matchups are about to start the steel cage. Oh man, and we got the FB watching. From wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Alexandra Marie trying to leave her opponent and leave her tag team partner. Ooh, did you see the uh, way they, they try to throw her leg to the cage? Yeah, that that was vicious, and and, and I no wonder why the ring the ring announcers calling them vicious and delicious. Oh, As Lilith now, uh, how's Alexandra Marie still holding on? There, not anymore. <laughs> oh, she got uh -oh. face planted. Do you see that corner? Oh boy. Ooh, what a slap! Oh, just slapping the Divas Champion, showing no respect for the champion. Oh, man, the is, is is smiling on the outside. Loving to get the call this action, the nameless referee. Yeah. I'm well, sure well, I know, I know, he also got the uh, call for the main event here tonight, world title match. You well, we're up. And I'm pretty sure the referee wish he has a body of lotion beside him. I'm pretty sure he wishes that he wasn't in front of a crowd right now, too. Yeah. As Lilith is down, Alexandria Marie, I don't know what she's waiting for here. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Alexandria made a big mistake, unlike her. As Denise yeah. Parkinson taking the fight to Rachel Cross. Yeah, just so much action going on back and forth here. Don't forget Lilith and Rachel uh -oh, Cross. Uh -oh, uh -oh, like the big full event. And I haven't seen no one try to climb the cage out this way yet tonight. Denise Parkinson. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh! oh electric chair drop! Shades of Edge! Man. Oh, and I don't know where to don't know where those feet hit, but that was a legal uh -oh. shot in a steel uh -oh. cage. Yeah, that's someone trying to get up out of here. Rachel Cross, the Divas Champion. But but Denise Parkinson stopping her, Nick Gem Gemini's girlfriend. Lilith now trying to climb the cage also. Sheesh. As Denise Parkinson trying to stop the Divas oh, Champion, oh, oh, but. Oh, she's gonna have a hard fall. Oh, ow! And the electric chair once again is Lilith at the top of the cage. Is Lilith gonna get out of the cage here? Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh, this is not going to end well. Pop star Alexandria Marie trying to give her the best of both worlds here. Uh oh, this is not going to end well, I'm telling you. And uh, a different kind of cage match we've been seeing. All these ladies trying to climb the cage quickly and trying to get out. Trying to maybe not take so much pain. Yeah, someone's gonna someone's about to have a someone's about to have a smash hit here. I think so, because all these ladies are in a very uh -oh, compromising uh -oh. position. Someone better get the medics. As I, I as I am ready to throw up, that referee should be ready to throw up an X instead of a lotion bottle. Uh oh, boy. Uh oh. Well, one of us about to make their way back here. Meanwhile, Denise the other, Parkinson. Meanwhile, on the back other in the side cage. Oh, she just ate that cage. Oh man. Lilith still trying to get out, but Alexandra Marie not allowing her to. Oh man. How she and what? Oh, a, oh oh. Oh wait a second. Now we got three ladies on top of the cage, Carter. Oh boy, this is getting ugly. This this is this is getting beautiful. Oh man. Whoa! Oh my <laughs> god! Rachel Cross tosses the Nate Parkinson! Oh man! That was the nastiest spill we'd see all night! Well, she had she ate a lot of the mat right there. She's trying to get back up to stop Rachel Cross, but the Divas champion Rachel her. Cross is out of the I cage. She's gonna stop her, Danny. She's mocking Denise Parkinson on her way down. 
But wait a second, this leaves her tag team partner a little in a compromising position. Uh oh. With the two blonde bombshells. Oh, the, oh boy. Something tells me this is not going to end well. As Rachel Cross might have got out of the cage, she left her tag team partner Lilith high and dry with the two blonde bombshells. Uh oh, this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well for Lilith. I believe both ladies are going to assault her. Wait, oh yes, my wait, God! Yes. This time they're almost using each other. They climb out of the cage, the two blonde bombshells using each other! Momentum! Lilith is out! Trying to get up to her feet! Oh, uh, she might be a little bit too late, Danny. I, yeah, I think this match is about to come to an end. As the blonde bombshells out of Marie, Denise Parkinson almost in stereo right now! Oh, Lilith trying to stop him! But no, it's too late. What a match, Carter! No kidding. Those ladies went in there and gave it their all. Rachel Cross might have just left Lilith high and dry. Absolutely. Here, here are your winners. And you gotta think, with the Divas of Vision being so hard fought, that this these two ladies might have just earned themselves both a Divas Championship shot, defeating the Divas Champion on pay-per-view. You know what? That's a very good possibility, Danny. There's no question about that whatsoever. Here we go, folks. As we are back, and I can see LaMarcus Carter's mic's working as it wasn't working during the entrances. No. Triple Threat Maple Leaf Championship matchup on the line. El Noveno, Billy Bowers challenging Evan O'Shea for the championship. Absolutely. Evan O'Shea, if I'm Evan O'Shea, I got to do whatever it takes to keep that title around my waist. Whoa, and, I, nice and I know you know Evan O'Shea very well from commentating a lot of his matches in WEDF. Absolutely. And okay. don't forget, I, I've heard rumors of the friendship of Elmo Vano and Billy Bowers possibly coming into effects here tonight. Haven't Man, seen no well, nothing like that yet. For you, Danny. When it comes to a championship, especially the Maple Leaf Championship, you have to throw th friendship out the window because, I mean, the title is more important than that. Yes, and there's only so many championship opportunities you receive in North American late wrestling with such a star-studded roster. That is true. I mean, so look, look at this. We got, we're lucky that we could have fit you in the car that we get you in the commentary booth tonight. Yeah. And, that, and that's nothing that's against your talent. You're a great wrestler, but heck, you're a hell of a commentator, too. Yeah, gee, thanks a lot, Danny. Uh-oh. Me and my Evan O'Shea trying to get by here. And Billy Bowers is bringing the pain on, too. Uh -oh. Elmo Vano, oh, Evan O'Shea is almost out of the well. steel cage. Oh, Lord. oh my god, Evan O'Shea went crashing down the mat. And oh. that's what I was talking about though earlier. Before Evan O'Shea unfortunately is on his back man, now. Man, look at this. And wait a second. Billy Bowers now trying to get out of the are, are these two men working the team? Are they gonna work as a team here? Oh, well, that's no. Too soon. I thought maybe for a second or two there that you were that, that what we had talked about was happening, Carter. Like I said, I mean, when it comes to the title, when it comes to the championship, we got no friendship out the window. Uh-oh. What? Did no Vano... Double! Oh, man. <laughs> Did no Vano set up Billy Bowers there? And Evan O'Shea, the poor smallest man in this match getting assaulted like that. That's crazy. Well, I thought Evan O'Shea would get used to, is getting, used to getting used to being bullied like this. You're right, because he usually is the smallest man in any of the matches that he competes in. That's true. As Evan O'Shea looking to deliver po possibly the sole renaissance here to Billy Bowers. Nails it, I believe. Oh, man. I tell you what. Evan O'Shea does have Michael Stun in this matchup. Evan O'Shea, the Maple Leaf champion for a reason, was able to knock off Aussie Annie for that championship. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Billy Bowers trying to get back here. As Billy Bowers, one of the North Maple Leaf Wrestling's newest superstars, trying to get out of here, but it does not work. Oh, man. Evan O'Shea has both men down right now, stomping away. Absolutely. Uh-oh. And Evan O'Shea almost put himself in a situation where both men are targeting him. Uh-oh. But Noveno okay. trying to escape out of the cage. Yeah, Noveno trying to get out, but he couldn't. But Evan O'Shea, like, like, like you said earlier, just he has almost all control of this match until now. Absolutely. Evan O'Shea now. Should I just stand back and, let, and watch these two get it on? 
That's what I would do, but Evan O'Shea is not that kind of wrestler, it seems. Mm -mm. I don't know what Billy Ballard was playing there for, but he's... Oh! oh man, he skull! And no Veno now. now. With a sad suplex to Evan O'Shea. Shea knocking both men down with that side suplex. Oh, man. But Billy Bauer's already back to his feet. And Billy Bauer's now going for some kind of maneuver. Oh. No, Evan O'Shea lands on his feet. He sure is at the end of that one. Oh, man. Bauer's now it's taking control. Almost shades of Taz right there. Evan O'Shea trying to stop Bowers, I believe. Uh -oh. Does so. And, and, uh -uh. and both these men, he has to fight these men off and trying to take his championship. Does so successfully. Also climbing the cage himself. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Evan O'Shea. Could this be it? Using his speed right now. Evan O'Shea. Uh oh. Oh no, Evan O'Shea's almost out, but Billy Bowers is climbing! Oh, man. oh no, God! You know what? I hope these guys have their insurance paid up. They can keep on taking falls like this and go unscathed. Oh, you can't even take falls like this and have a good health plan at this rate! Oh man. No, Vano oh. now trying to get out of the cage. Doesn't oh, work though. What the? Oh. I think he might have been going for some kind of like chicken wing there, but who knows what Evan O'Shea's thinking? That man's crazy. Oh man. Did you see how he just got spun around in that maneuver? You know something? That's the first uh, pinfall attempt we had tonight. Don't, every match in every match has a pinfall attempt allowed. There, that's the, there's no reason why no one else has tried tonight. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. We have a race going on. We're, this is going to be for the Maple Leaf Championship. Billy Bowers is going to be the decision of this match. Who's going to stop? I don't know. I think he's... He's... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Evan he's O'Shea stopping his own Evan friend. Here. Evan O'Shea is going to get out of here. Billy Bowers is holding on to his own friend. Oh, oh my God. O'Shea retains. Oh, man. Who would have guessed it came down to friends? Cost... I guess if one couldn't win it, the other couldn't. Oh boy, that's something to tell me that this is not this is not going to uh, make that friendship any better. No, I don't know. Vano can't be too happy. Billy Bowers had the, almost he had the decision right there. He could have stopped O'Shea, I think. Absolutely. But as you see in the replays, I want to see the strength of Billy Bowers whipping, whipping O'Shea around like crazy. Absolutely. And you know something about those two again and on. Evan O'Shea took advantage of the situation. Just climb on out of there. Great camera angle as the other two men distracted with each other. Evan O'Shea got, gets out of the cage, retains the Maple Leaf Championship. Evan O'Shea the legend. Absolutely. What a victory for Evan O'Shea. He earned a victory here tonight. What a victory. Oh, a small man like that in a steel cage being locked up with two giant Brahma Bulls. Fans absolutely loving the action here tonight at North American League Wrestling's Cajun event. Evan O'Shea victorious. Oh, man. Whoa! What's going on, Mike Thunder? Oh, the man. Viking! Mike Thunder! Oh boy, Evan O'Shea's gonna have a hate this contest. This thing is over. Good lord. Busted, uh, did you see that? He was busted open when he was driven into the ring steps face first by Mike Ballander. Oh man. Well, I think it's hit too soon. Oh, good lord. I think it's hit too soon. We know who's next in there for the Maple Leaf Championship. Mike Ballander just made a statement. We have to move on though. God damn, what a statement made by Mike Ballander. Oh, man. Extreme Tony, Aussie Andy, the winner of this match, will take on Smokey for the All-American Championship at a later date. Oh, boy. As the playmaker making his way down the ring right now, lost against Monster Messiah in his last out in North American League Wrestling, looking to turn it, it around here tonight. I think an Extreme Tony, Andy, I see someone who, you know, 
Well, it looks like it's if he has what takes to be good in the ring. Extreme Tony has not. He, he has, needs, he, it's just that he needs that fire, that intensity. He needs that crowd support like no other. That's what he needs. When he has that crowd support that he garners just like nobody else, when he really has it behind him, nobody can beat Extreme Tony. Extreme Tony, a hell of an athlete, but the crowd support. When he, you, you, Tony will even admit it himself. And yeah, here we go, folks. Aussie Andy, a man who's been on a roll, recently challenged for the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship in a losing effort. Yeah, here comes, here comes the man from down on him. The Outback, the man from the Outback. And you gotta say, as I brought up the fans earlier, the fans absolutely love Aussie Andy. We're in America, actually we're in Canada tonight, but these fans all over the world love Aussie Andy. Yeah, he looks like he's a spokesman for Outback Steakhouse. Man loves Outback Steakhouse. Oh. Well, they do serve some good onion rings, so. And you gotta say, Extreme Tony even giving Aussie Andy respect right there, giving him the, giving him the ring to himself. Showing Absolutely. great respect between both these men. We see RC Andy. He got himself, he's getting himself ready. What a golden no. opportunity that is on the line here. I gotta ask you, Carter, does it make you a little bit jealous watching these two men compete for a number one contenders match for the All American title? Or would you not want to be in a steel cage with one either of these men? I'll be honest with you, Danny. To be honest. I wanted, be, I wanted to be in that ring and beat the living daylights out of both of them. So I I, you have, you have good history, both these men, too. So that I can get my hands back around Smokey's neck. Because someone, so, someone needs to put the old dog to sleep for good. Ooh, you tell, you tell me you want old yeller behind the barn. Yeah, I got a double bass shotgun ready with this name <laughs> on it. Oh my god, well I can only imagine Cobb, Asian, Smokey, LaMarcus Carter, the final showing. Right now, Extreme Tony. And I do want to comment on the clean break that we had earlier in the match to start off the matchup. Both these men really, even in a steel cage with a clean break. Absolutely. Eventually, we're going to, eventually we're going to pull Carson to the win and just stop the living daylights out of each other. Only one of these men can challenge for the All-American title. Extreme Tony and Smokey know each other very well. Uh, just as well as Extreme Tony and LaMarcus Carter. LaMarcus Carter and Smokey know each other, in my opinion. Aussie Andy would be the wild card. Now, nah, Extreme Tony. You know, like I said, Extreme Tony, now, he, he's very, very good. I, I got to give him that. He's really, really good. That's just he's one a, thing. He's a master craftsman, man. Yeah, but, yeah, but he, he's just, he, I mean, he he's not, he's not me. Danny. He's not 6'7. He's not LaMarcus Carter. I understand that. A lot of problem with Extreme Tony is that his height advantage is he, his size advantage alone. You know, he, 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 he's the Enzo Amare of this company. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Extreme Tony's highly respected. <laughs> but you hear LaMarcus Carter's comments. Oh! Do you see that like dragon suplex by Ossiani right there? Yes, that was very impressive. Uh oh. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can tell by the tone of my voice, I am very, very salty. Lamarcus Carter does not want to be calling this All American number one contenders match where the winner is going to take on Smokey. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pour some more salt into that wound, Danny. Go ahead. Pour some more salt into that wound so there's no more salt left in that box. <laughs> But Marcus Carter should be in this matchup. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Is Smokey, Smokey's too busy photoshopping something right now. Oh, boy. Either that he's just too busy trying to go to the fountain of youth. <laughs> Looking for that one big final moment. I like Smokey. He's, a, he's, he's great to have here in North American Elite Wrestling. Yes, I mean, I'm down. already retired, so getting to watch all you guys I've been in the ring with hundreds of times wrestles still is fun for me. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, Extreme Tony. Not going to let the Outback Man get out of the cage. Now, the last time I remember Ossiani having a cage match was against 
Connor James and LaMarcus Carter had gotten involved, as I mentioned earlier today, as, earlier on the show. You know something? Danny, I'm not, I'm not even going to say anything, Danny. I'm just going to let you have your moment. I know that you don't have, you don't have, you don't usually have too many moments like this, so go ahead. Not anymore, unfortunately. Extreme Tony looking for that steak suplex, but Ossiani was able to reverse into that giant half a full Nelson suplex. Oh. I don't even know what to call that. That was totally, that was not whatever I said that was. Well, I think, I think, I think right now, Aussie Andy is just continuing his assault on Extreme Tony. Extreme and some would say it's an upset trouble. if Aussie Andy walks out of this cage with a victory. With, with a victory. He would have earned it, that's for sure. Would you say it's an upset? No, I wouldn't say it's an upset, but I would definitely would say that he he earned it. You know, he's because, a you know, Aussie Andy, like I said, he, he's, he's a star in the making. He also just ate some steel cage. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and you know, like I said, you know, he 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 wants to prove that Australia has a great wrestling has a great wrestling tradition. And but, it does. You know, you look at wrestlers such as uh, the superstar formerly known as Emma. And how great I don't she know is. Emma. There's also Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair's last match happened in Australia. We need to talk about that. Oh, there's a little, Australia has a great history background. Extreme Tony gets two on the cover. Okay. Aussie Andy kicking out Extreme Tony. That, that shows you the respect Tony has for Andy trying to pin him in this match. Not even trying to climb over the cage. Man. Have we seen one pinfall victory yet tonight? Mm, no, we have not. I don't think so, no. Yeah, you're right. Andy now taking the fight to Tony. What could he be looking for here? It's gonna be the Aussie uh -oh. bomb. Uh oh. I'm believing it's gonna be the Aussie bomb. Nails it. Should have went for the cover. He does. And boy, he barely got the shoulder up. Barely, he hooked the leg. That was smart. Cause if he did, cause who would have known? And that was a great cover by Andy, but only got two. That's true. Two and seven eights. Oh man. And man, he is staying on the fight. Is Aussie Andy now trying to climb out? Yeah, you better start climbing. Exchange Tony's back up to his feet. Andy trying to get out. Tony trying to stop him. All American Championship shot on the line. Oh my God. I think Extreme Tony might be trying to. Uh... Oh, wait a minute, look at this. Oh, squeezing, squeezing Aussie Andy right there. Man. Hurting the rib cage. Does Extreme Tony know something that we don't? I don't, I don't know, but like I guess like Extreme Tony's trying to get about this cage. And Andy's rib cage might be hurt. Oh, man. Oh, well, if ain't hurting, it sure as heck hurt it down. Yeah, <laughs> both men's rib cage are going to be hurting after that one. I think Andy's rib cage is killing him. Oh, man. Tony, the first one up to his feet after that. Sometimes you have to endure the pain. You have to do as much pain as possible. And Extreme Tony, the showman, might have been showing off a little too much right there. Oh, boy. I see. This is your chance. You've got to start climbing. With that big forearm, Ossiani, trying to get out of this cage now. Uh oh. Oh, oh he's up there. Extreme Tony trying to stop him. Uh oh. And Ossiani's on the other side. I think he might have it. Ah, uh, yep. Ladies we have a new Madison. number one contender for the All American title, and his name Kakara Stimak. His name is Aussie Andy, and I believe Carter just tried to assault Andy. Something that Andy's very familiar with. What a steel cage match! Carter, calm down. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy my time. I'm gonna buy my time, go wait till the time is right. If I wasn't here right now, Carter, you'd be all over him. You got that, boy. Like a bear on honey. Extreme Tony and Aussie Andy having a great singles cage match here. Aussie Andy somehow escapes the cage. Aussie Bomb doesn't finish off Extreme Tony. The Aussie Forearm does, though. Yeah, Extreme Tony. Gotta go to the back of the line, buddy. 
And once again, Extreme Tony with another big loss here on pay-per-view. I wonder how that's going to be feeling in the mindset of Tony. Yeah, he can't win when it counts, Danny. That's all there is to it. He cannot Lately, win he can't. when it counts. Lately, he has not been able to in North American Elite Wrestling. Aussie Andy is looking forward to an All-American Championship shot. As we have to move on here tonight, as Aussie Andy celebrates a hard-fought victory. We have the Junior Weight Championship is going to be on the line. Zack Starter Challenger, Marcus Matrix, the inaugural champion and defending champion. The following contest is a steel cage match. It is for the Junior Welterweight Championship. Thank you, ref. Thank you, ring announcer. Here we go. As Zack Star about to make his way down the ring, another member of the WDF roster and a WDF legend himself, Zack Star. What? Tell me something, Danny. I mean, you and Zack are cousins. Yep. Up, until have you two ever gotten to fight? Multiple times. Currently, we're not even seeing eye to eye right now. Zack Star left the bloodline. He's now taking it upon himself again to be to, to really raise his own stock, raise his own star, as he says. Well, he he wants to get out of your shadow, Danny. He Him wants and Biff to he can stand on his own two feet. He's a former new WWE champion. WDF dropped the ball with Zack Star by not making him the WDF champion. Zack Star can be. The greatest. He's a former new NAW World Heavyweight Champion for a reason. He's also been, and let's get a, let, let's all laugh at this one. Jack Star is also a former VW VWU World Champion. <laughs> hey, you you win World Championship any place you can get. <laughs> Zack Star, World Champion anywhere he's been, and a lot of places he's been looking to win the Junior Weight Championship here tonight, in North American Elite Wrestling. Do I detect some kind of hatred towards VWU, Danny? Oh, no, I don't give a shit for VWU. They hate me, though. They hate me, though. <laughs> We're not pulling those shows live here tonight as Zack Star is in the ring. I'll promise you guys that. We're also pulling no punches here tonight either. So long, fourth wall. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh. Marcus Matrix, the cocky, flamboyant junior weight champion, has defeated everyone in his past so far. Yeah, you can see, you can see, yeah, don't have to call him cocky. I've never seen a person where uh, blew that loud. That blew that loud and win matches and louder. Z yeah, he's going to take on Zack Star here tonight. His biggest challenge to date. Well, in the words, Buddha's the barber beefcake when you need him. I don't know. I, where, where, where's Rocky Maivia smiling the blue chipper when you need him? <laughs> Marcus Matrix is the junior weight champion. He has defeated the, and the likes of his championship reign. Guys like Daniel Morgan. Guys like Corporate Alien. <laughs> Marcus Matrix is for reals also defeated Incognito on pay-per-view. Let me see. No, it's easy to win a championship, but it's hard to stay champion. And Marcus Matrix, is, as part of this to say champion, has been staying champion. The only junior weight champion to date. Absolutely. Introducing the challenger. Has From even raised the stock. Dakota, weighing in at 210 pounds, Zach. As I mentioned, has raised the Introducing stock of the, the championship. Champion from Hollywood, California, weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the super smooth Marcus Man. <laughs> <laughs> super smooth Marcus Matrix, everybody. <laughs> You guys see, I know Carter loves Marcus May. He has just found his new favorite wrestler. <laughs> 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 He's the junior.
heavyweight champion. He is from Hollywood, California. He is Marcus Matrix. The super smooth. <laughs> I know the way he says that. So hilarious. <laughs> 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 and the super smooth drop kick down the super smooth stomp right there by Marcus Matrix. His action is getting on the way here, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to keep him cool. <laughs> I don't want to take anything away because Marcus Matrix going right after the Azimim and going for the cover on Zack Star only gets one. Oh man. Why, uh, you, you, you look at him continue his assault here. On the it, re, G has a known game plan going right into this right now, and he's making it known. That's the back, the ribs, the midsection of Zack Star, and he is proving it right here. Marcus Matrix knows the threat he's against. Absolutely. So give us a lot of a number of Mark <laughs> Marcus Matrix, Junior Weight Champion. As I mentioned, raised the stock of the belt the very first time the Junior Weight Championship has been on the main card of the pay per view. And not only that, he's also gotten it to the point where it is under the World Heavyweight Title match. Uh -oh. hey, he's Zach Stark, I don't think he was expecting a game Marcus Matrix like this. Uh -oh. And I think that's David, the thing David, no one expects from Matrix. I think he's trying to end this match. And Matrix, he he has Zack Stark down and hurt. Star turning up to his feet. Oh, Matrix's legs gotta be killing him. And his back. Oh man, now his face. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say yeah. Oh, Zack Star now climbing the cage somehow. Matrix is down though. Junior weight championship is on the line. All I know is, man, oh, Matrix the cover only gets one. All I know is if I was going to be falling out that cage, I would not be landing like that. <laughs> Hell no. Uh -oh. Matrix trying to get out of the cage here. Zack Star is getting up to his feet. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He's all the way up there at the top. Zack Star missed it. What is Zack Star doing here? Uh -oh. Matrix might be done. Star trying to stop him. And is not that again. something that we didn't see in the extreme Tony Ossiani match. These two men are fighting on the steel cage, or at least by any vicinity of a steel cage. Oh, it's not Tessie. Someone's about to have a hard fall here. Zack Star out, brings Marcus Matrix back in. Both men still down. Or both men still up by me on the cage, on the rope. They're hanging, they're hanging by a fit here. And they're trying, I think they're both trying to escape right now this steel cage. Yeah. Having a race to the top. As Zack Star is up, and Marcus Matrix also behind him. Uh oh. And this, uh -oh. this is something we haven't seen, I think, guys, all night. Guys, please don't die. As the fans are even yelling, please don't die. Please don't die. Oh boy. They're, 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 they're just up there at the top of the cage. And they're, get, and they're getting the fans respect. The uh -oh. fans might not like both these men, but they are definitely. So but, have a hard fall. I thought Matrix was about to fall the other way. Oh my god! And I think Zack Star's gonna take advantage of the situation. Look Zack Star is gonna win the junior weight. Marcus Matrix is somehow back up to his feet and trying to climb. How? I have no idea, Danny. I have no idea whatsoever. He's bringing Zack Star in the hard way, but the Zack Star likes it or not. And I don't even know how Matrix is standing on his feet, let alone bringing the offense to Zack Star. Makes him meet the steel cage. Man. If they are still badly here on the side of the cage. Is this Knight of the Skywalkers? Is these guys haven't even touched the ring, man, unless they're taking giant bumps. God. And here we go. Marcus Matrix almost out of the cage, but Zack Star right behind him. Folks. And this is a dangerous spot to be in once again, guys. This is scary. Oh, boy. Of, um, Memphis and not only that, dude, it's so scary that one of these guys could even knock their opponent off the other way and lose the match. <laughs> All kinds of ways right now. Marcus Matrix almost goes flying out of the cage. Down the work, down the winning area. Oh my god! And that means next guy's trying to take advantage of the situation. And Matrix wants to get up to his feet! Does yeah. not want to lose the Junior Weight Championship! 
She's a young kid, he has that bounce back, I guess, that our bodies wouldn't have. And again, I think these men's feet have been in the air longer than they've been on the mat. And again, they are back up here at the top again, folks. No, this is a different style cage match than I've seen all night. Oh, man. Someone's going to be dancing on the ceiling by the time this thing is over. And I don't think these guys can, can take another... I don't think Marcus Majors can take another dump like that. Oh, man. Stop! Going down! Matrix should have this match won. Zack Star's rib cage, his back has been attacked by Matrix all match. I'm surprised he hasn't he's, been up he, yet. He's gonna, he's, I think he's gonna take advantage of this situation. Zack Star Matrix back in, uh, climbing uh, referee, down he's, now. He's in there. The match is over. Yeah, the match is over. Marcus Matrix retains the junior weight championship against Zack Star, game opponent. Man, that was a tough matchup. How did Matrix stand up after two giant bumps like that? I two giant falls. He really, really must have a high threshold of pain. He wants to be, he's really proven his junior weight championship reign and holds on to the championship still against a gained Zack Star. Absolutely. Marcus Matrix, again, I am shocked right now. Cage in. This was the sixth steel cage match tonight. And it's still knocking my block off when I see action like this. Here is your winner. And still, <laughs> super smooth. Marcus. <laughs> I need the, I need the ring announcer is stone. Super smooth. Marcus Matrix wins the wins the match. <laughs> oh my God! North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship on the line. Steel Cage Triple Threat. You gotta be here. I swear, he, 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 we gonna have to call on this Super Smooth I leave, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> super smooth, Chris Knight, or something like that. <laughs> oh. Triple threat match for the North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship, everybody. Yeah, Nate Farron, uh, the champion. Chris Snyder, the challenger, along with Monster Messiah. I believe Monster Messiah making his way down the ring right now. One of two challengers. Nate Farron has defeated Monster Messiah before in singles action for the World Heavyweight title. Oh, boy. As here comes Monster Messiah, a guy who... Well, shh. I hate to be locked in a steel cage with him alone, let alone with two or three different people. I don't want. I don't want to be locked up with him. I don't want to be locked up with him. Period. This this man, he he loves Cajun. We his eyes just his sparkled for the first time ever when you when someone told him about every single match being inside a steel cage. You can't tell it. You can't tell Danny, but for listening to us, we smiling from ear to ear. Uh, yeah, you can't tell with that mask on, but I guarantee you this man is smiling ear to ear. Robert Master Monaco, Monster Messiah. He, he's always saying, he's always fantasizing, brutalizing both uh, men in this matchup for the for the heavyweight championship. What are nightmares is what his dreams are about. We would be nightmares of seeing what this man dreams about doing to Chris Snyder and Nate Farron. That would be nightmares to us. This is what this guy dreams about. Yeah, yeah pleasant dreams to him. And yeah, they're pleasant dreams, absolutely. He doesn't what is better than nothing when you're in those dreams. Yeah. Boy, you, you fall <laughs> right into that one, Danny. Just <laughs> right <on> in. <laughs> As you can tell, this show is about an hour long. We've had some screw ups, and Monster Messiah can magically turn the lights on all by himself. Oh man, you don't have to pay the electric bill. <laughs> you don't have to pay the electric bill, exactly. <laughs> we can't afford that. <laughs> oh, Messiah. Messiah you get some stuff, right? I'm pretty sure somewhere both Freddy Krueger and Jason are jealous of him. And Mike Myers. I'm possibly even Chucky. Yeah. Yeah, you know Victor Crowley? Victor Crowley from Hatchet. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that movie. <laughs> it's really, it's like the best slasher film in like the new era. Like it's probably like the last good slasher ser series. Yeah, I prefer Child's Play, but that's just me. <laughs> it probably ain't just you. It probably, probably a lot of other people too. Uh 
Mm. Mazda Messiah, one of the two challengers here tonight. Absolutely. Now here's here comes a man that well Connor James has been teaming up with. Your former tag team partner left you for this man, Con Chris Snyder, the Brick House. Uh, I, I, I guess even I guess uh, Chris Snyder, he, if he love if he loves a bitch, he has a very good tag team partner. <laughs> Maybe Connor James just like hanging out with guys who have big muscles and oily bodies. Do you ever think about that? Maybe he's hanging around with him because he has a big lollipop. You never know. I'm not going to what you're saying what I'm thinking. As Chris Snyder defeated Nate Fair in by countout for the North American Elite Re or, or in a North American Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship match the on the very last show. From Birmingham, Alabama, weighing in at 305 pounds, Chris Snyder. Nice to see the ref. Nice to see the ring announcer this guy sober. <laughs> he's not. He's not super smooth, Chris Steiner. <laughs> oh, Marcus Matrix did with a big win here tonight. Chris Steiner already owns a victory over Nate Farron. Monster Messiah actually owns a victory over Nate Farron in one-on-one -on -one action also uh, a few months back. So both these men can defeat Nate Farron. It's been shown. Absolutely. Chris Steiner actually hasn't been beat, beat by Nate Farron yet. I, I think the date, I could be wrong, the All-American Title Tournament did happen. <laughs> so well, I could be wrong in that. Nate Farron is a marked man in this matchup. He is. Both men have history with Nate Farron. Nate Farron, she was the fan's favorite until recent actions by Nate Farron walking out to retain a championship using questionable tactics to defeat Andy. But, but he is the only guy in this match I definitely have respect for. Chris Snyder and Monster Messiah, both guys that a hard to respect. They respect their in-ring premise, but not their personality premise. Absolutely. We get ready to see Nate Farron make his way to the ring. As we get ready for it. The Brick House, Monster Messiah, the challengers. And, you know, like I said, Nate Farron has a target on his chest because, you know, it, you know, it's hard for a champion to leave the matchup with the championship is harder when you got more than one person. Especially when you got a steel cage surrounding you, a guy who's, you know, but these men, six foot two, 280 pound Chris Snyder, six foot one, the monster, 300 the pound monster Messiah, six foot nine, 279 pound Nate Farron. You got three huge behemoth men. As I talk over the ring announcer like a jerk. Sorry, ring announcer. <laughs> <laughs> Did he call him the unit? <laughs> I don't know what he called him. <laughs> he is the world heavyweight champion, though, right now. I know that. that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and Nate Farron, as you can see, he's almost accepting the fans are not behind him like they used to be. There's some fans change. Hey, uh, Danny, he doesn't care. He doesn't give a damn. His focus is trying to keep the uh, title around his waist. He knows it. And he knows it too, I think, now, yeah, too, the so North American they, so Wrestling they, Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, so they know what part of his body they can kiss, and, and, they, and he knows what part of his body they can suck. <laughs> I don't know if they fair in some of the fans that. But the as, he, as you can see, he still taunts the fans, Nate Farron. He still, he still, he still wants the fan support, but... He's gonna have to do some question, some different methods if he's gonna want to continue that fan support. Yeah, that's true. But you know what? Just, just screw fan support and just go out and let your actions do the talking. It doesn't matter if the fans want to cheer or boo. This ain't bizarre world. You just go out there and you fight. You fight to maintain your championship. You do whatever it takes to keep your title, even if it's by hook or by crook. And they fair and using by hook or by crook by last time, defeating Chris Snyder by count out to retain the title. Or didn't defeat him, but use a count out to retain the championship. Where did we get our referee from? The nameless referee? Yeah, the one out there with the, um... The one that was holding the lotion earlier. Wait, wait. <laughs> Forget it. That's not referee the Todd. I, I like the Todd. Women, we have a sign off the pit. And step, wait a second, that could be it. No, Snyder trying to. That's not quickly trying to defeat Nate Farron in this match. 
World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Cajun, main event, the three biggest names going to North American League Wrestling today. And Snyder with a big kick to the midsection of Nate Farron. We we seen a hard hitting main event between Nate Farron and Chris Snyder last time. The match only lasted like four or five minutes. Shit, there's just so much. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, someone's trying to get the heck up on the body here. And Snyder, if Snyder the rookie could somehow win the World Heavyweight Championship, he's only been in call for two years. Nate better find some way to get up. Oh, wait a minute. Nate is back up. And Monster Messiah says Snyder flying. And it stomps on his face. Uh oh. Oh, oh whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think he landed on him. I'm not sure though. Messiah is a beast in this match right now. Oh man. That's what I love it. Let's about to see some teamwork. I don't think any of these guys like each other and have any respect for each other in any way, shape, or form. Huge suplex. Yeah, well, I was about to, I was about to comment on that. Yeah, Fair is a big guy to be suplexing. Oh man, the strength of all these men too. To throw up, throw up Nate Farron for a suplex like that. Yeah, that's easier said than done. Hammerlock got got by Monster Messiah. I would have never got to see a wrestling move like a hammerlock in a, in a uh, steel cage like this. Snyder calls this the bomb, the barbell bomb, I believe. But no, I think Nate Fair. No, he's just going for a backbreaker like maneuver, I believe. Yeah, I was about to say, Nate managed to get out of it, though. Yeah, and Snyder, though, try, smart move by Snyder trying to get the submission while Monster Messiah was distracted. Uh oh. Snyder now. Snyder could be. A few minutes, seconds away from becoming the world heavyweight champion, North American Elite. Yeah, if he can find a good footing. Uh oh. He gets his foot in right. Snyder's a big guy with big feet. Size 14 E feet. Wait a minute. Both of them are trying to get up to him. <laughs> oh, he does, none of these guys want this man to become World Heavyweight Champion. Because oh. if, if he does, that means you can't. And that also means that they don't want their match to end. As Chris Snyder's still on top of the cage, Nate Fair and Monster Messiah both trying to bring him back in. Uh -oh. And we got a brawl, on the, a brawl on the ropes right here between these three guys. Oh, and Snyder ate the steel cage, and he's down! Uh-uh. Farron and Messiah, oh wait a second, Messiah! The only guy left, Farron got crashing down the ring mat! Uh-uh. Snyder now! Yes. Uh-oh, Snyder, you better Messiah, get Messiah, though! Trying to get out of the cage, Snyder's up there! Messiah, I think, is gonna stop by Snyder right now, Snyder! Trying to get Monster Messiah back oh, in this match. Farron back up to his feet too. All three men now on the ropes. This is chaos. Oh boy. Uh -oh. This is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Ooh. And four arms. Oh! I was about to say the same thing. I think he did. Oh. Monster Messiah. Oh! I was about to say the same thing. I think he did. Monster Messiah. Oh! And I think he landed on Snyder on the way down. Oh, good lord. And Nate Barron. Nate Barron's going to take advantage of the situation. He has the two monsters down. They're both getting back up to their feet, though, and Nate Barron's trying to get out of this cage. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Barron's going to retain. The, oh, boy. They're, they're, they're not going to let him out, though. Oh, Nate I think Barron both the monsters. Nate up there, and I mean sitting pretty. And you can hear these fans are booing. They wanted Barron to retain. Snyder back that down. <laughs> Farron can somehow, somehow just get over his cage. And Farron is getting back in his bed with the spikes on the If he takes about to say exactly if he likes it or not, Monster Messiah has dra dragged him back into this, into at least his vicinity of the cage. Uh -oh. But Farron and Messiah now uh -oh. trying to get out. Uh oh, we're about to have another battle up here. And this is for the World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> and Snyder wants in. Oh, wait a second. Nate Farron's in a bad way on top of the cage. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. This is a beautiful song. That band is like 15 feet up in the air. I can't believe Monster Messiah. If he could climb out right now, he'd win the match. What is he doing? Monster Messiah is trying to get up, but Nate Farron is holding on to his leg. And Chris Snyder. I was about to say, okay. 
Now, I, I know the song Rise of Pony, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Monster Messiah, I think is is he like? I'm gonna edit. I'm gonna edit off a few seconds of this. It's gonna stop in a second. <laughs> All right, waiting, waiting, waiting. <laughs> I, didn't, I never realized this was in this match. How did I forget about this? <laughs> there we go. I must have realized something was happening. Wait, 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 two more seconds. I'm pretty sure there's, there's two pause menus right here. There's, there's gonna be this one and then another one. There we go, they went right after this. And Monster Messiah on top of that cage. Oh wait, nope, after this one. <laughs> <laughs> Monster uh -oh. Messiah on top of that cage. Uh, uh. Nate Farron stopping him. Oh come on. Okay, right here we're gonna do it. this should be it. Monster Messiah on top of that cage. Nate Farron. Uh -oh. Oh, get attacked by Snyder. Someone. This is not gonna end well for someone. <laughs> this is not gonna end well for somebody. You're very right. Monster Messiah is getting stopped though by Nate Farron. Chris Snyder also on top of that rope. Still, Nate Farron trying to stop Monster Messiah from winning the heavyweight championship. Oh, man. Nate Farron, you better do something. Monster Messiah on top of the cage. Uh-oh. Nate Farron stopping Monster Messiah. Finally. <laughs> Nate Farron finally stopping Monster Messiah, who is trying to Wait escape the cage. Oh, good Lord. His head's got to be ringing. His head's and got to be ringing. Nate Farron is just... Double knocking, knocking both these men right now. Man. Oh, do you see how Snyder and Monster Messiah both landed? Nate Farron has is a is a freight train momentum right now. Looking for his finisher. The choke slam. Nails it on Snyder. This has got to be it, Nate Farron. He's going for the pin. Look, Nate Farron's retained the heavyweight championship of the world. After Monster Messiah was so close to escaping on top of that cage, seemed to have had an issue on top of the cage. Man. I tell you what, you got to tip your hat to all three of these men. But giving us one heck of a main event. But how about that ending by Farron? Just took both Here's men's heads, slamming them against that cage. Nate, Nate Farron retains the championship. The commentator must be high. Oh boy. Well, thankfully, this night is just about over. Now you can go and go to the store and get some munchies. Wait a second! <laughs> Who is this? I thought we were gonna go watch some girls in cage dance, but but a masked man is attacking Nate Farron. Do you have any idea who this is? Who this is, Lil Marcus Carter? I have no idea, but whoever he is, he's sending a message. He's sending a state. Almost dressed in like riot gear. Man. Oh my God! What a slam by this. This random man, I can't even tell. With a, with a move like that, how can you figure out who it is? Oh, just driven down head first. I don't know who this is, but this is the end of the show. Good fight. Good night. Oh, man. That was a pretty good show. Um, if you...